welcome back to Servus Crowd, Germany for non-Germans, season two now kicking off after a quick short break, back to talking about all things Germany for non-Germans. And if you've been with me before the season break, if you wish, you know that at the end, towards the end of the season, it got a bit heavy on the topics. They talked about politics and of course the Ukraine conflict and so on. And while I think this is all very important and we will certainly also talk politics again in either the next or the one, one episode after that. So within the next two weeks for sure. Um, I thought let's start let's start season two off with a l topic that's a little less intense and maybe also something that you might be interested in now due to the fact that what's mostly considered to be summer holidays coming up soon. So uh, maybe you or your friends or someone you know are considering to travel to Germany. So I thought, hey, why not quickly well, discuss a few German, German sites that you might want to see and well, just rate the most famous German sites so you know whether or not it's worth going or not. To do so, I googled for the most famous German tourist attractions. I found a few websites that mostly agree. Um, I opened three of them right now. They are, have many things in common. There's one is deutschewelle.com, dw.com, which is clearly a sponsored article because number one is the is a theme park, so <laughs> forget about that. Uh, but the others seem legit and I have two more to make just sure that uh, I, I get the, the most famous ones because you know, if you live in a country, maybe some of the things that are normal for you are awesome for others. So I just wanted to sh make sure I don't forget anything. So without further ado, Servus Crowd, Germany for non-German, Germans, tourist attractions rated. So let's go. First tourist att attraction um, that I can see on DW.com is uh, the Romantic Road. And it's a weird one, but I would have not picked it. But then I thought, hey, actually, that's a kind of, kind of a cool thing to pick. So the Romantic Road is just several roads it's that, that, that are connected that go all across Germany I think also in other parts of Europe and it's been like labeled romantic road because it's like the, the scenic route so to speak and it, I think there was a thing like in the 60s they wanted to boost tourism and like hey we have this romantic road where you can see like the castles and the green hill the green hills and forests and whatnot so you just follow that romantic road so several lots of streets are part of the romantic road and they're all connected so if you travel by car or bike um yeah you can you can just travel the uh, romantic road i think it's a more than 400 kilometers long if i'm not mistaken and it starts in my hometown which is würzburg um and it, from würzburg it goes to füsten i believe um and you can just see like the, the castles and everything it's it's, it's really pretty so it, it deserves the name romantic road so it's kind of cool um would i go there just for the sake of going there no would i go there if i go somewhere between würzburg and füssen which is in if you like going somewhere in bavaria yes then i would take the romantic road so if you're going somewhere anyways and the romantic road is an option take the romantic road if you are in berlin which is like in, further up the northern hamburg which is very north and you're like should i go down to the south just to be on the romantic road no you should not <laughs> but if you if you're down there anyways Check out the Romantic Road. Yes, I agree with that. Um, then what else do we have on the list? Uh, Zugspitze, the, the Zugspitze Mountain. With uh, DW says, including the Partner Gorge, um, Partner Klamm in German. Yes, totally agree. Um, I haven't been there my whole life <laughs> until I left Germany. And then I came back to Germany and then I'm like, well, let's do the tourist thing. And I went to the Zugspitze and it's definitely worth it. So the Zugspitze is a fantastic, fantastic area, like a huge mountain, obviously. Um, if you're into snow, uh, maybe don't go during the, the hottest summer. But if you're going like in May or so, you still see lots of snow, which would be right now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, it's the air is so clean. It's ridiculous. If, uh, I'm I'm based in Asia right now, as you might know. So if you're based in Asia and you think you know mountains, no, you don't know mountains. Um, <laughs> that's a I mean, Southeast Asia, I should say. And don't don't get mad at me if you're like no, um, 
climbed all those, those mountains in Asia. I mean, like if you're like where I'm based in Thailand, Singapore and so on, then you don't know mountains. So then this is a huge mountain and the air is amazing. And I agree. Same thing though. Would I go there if I'm in, in the north? Ah, mm. I would try to add um, a travel route to the south or doing something in the south. If you're in the south, spend a day up in up there no matter if you're in bavaria or if you're, if you're in austria even go there definitely worth it uh then we have the berlin wall yes i'm a sucker for berlin uh, i'm not from berlin uh, but i i worked there for a while i lived there for a while and every time i go back to germany even though the planes usually go to frankfurt like the most flights go to frankfurt i always go to berlin first because it's just the vibe is just so different um it's insane i know it's 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 so not german <laughs> it's really cool um multicultural and of course uh very historical and so yeah the berlin wall for for someone who who is german like so i i'm obviously biased so for me the berlin wall is like one of the two most i know intense monument sites that i can visit and so i i I'm getting a bit melancholy when I when I walk past the Berlin Wall, but I'm also like happy that it's not there anymore. I mean, it it doesn't separate us anymore. And so yeah, it's 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 crazy to walk past. Um, every time I, I took friends from abroad um, and we passed it for the first time, they all were in shock that this actually looked like that. Um, so yeah, go check out the Berlin Wall. It's worth it. So one more time, like. <sighs> If you didn't plan on going to Berlin because you arrive in Frankfurt and your plan is, go, is to go down south or something, I would totally understand that. If you have the time and it's a, it's a, it's, it's an hour flight from Frankfurt, or it's like a, I don't know, five, six hours drive, I guess. Um, if you got the time, Berlin is amazing. There's, of course, also so many cool things that you could be doing, like museums and whatnot coming in a second. Um, as other highlights but yeah so berlin is definitely worth a trip um and the wall definitely worth seeing uh then on on the list of dw.com is uh, lake constance and lake constance is really pretty really pretty like really pretty <laughs> but you know that the but is coming um I'm not sure if that's the that's the reason why you're going to Germany. So it's if you're in Germany and you live there and you're like, I want to see something pretty, go to Lake Constance. Would I go to? It's it's a pretty lake. With like, it looks a bit like Mediterranean. Um, there's lots of like UNESCO World Heritage sites around. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I'm thinking right now. I think so, right? Or those those prehistoric things are there. I haven't been in forever. <laughs> But is that the reason why you go to Germany is the question. So if you're in the area, yes, go to Lake Constance. If you think, oh, I'm not in the area, but should I spend two days going to Lake Constance? Then no, you shouldn't. Because you, you, that Mediterranean feeling is, it's cool, but that's not the reason why you're going to Germany, I, I assume. So it's nice to have. It's not worth planning a whole trip around, in my, in my opinion. Same goes, and now there come the haters. Same goes for uh, Rothenburg op der Tauber, Rodenburg op der Tauber, right? Super famous for this, this, this one, those one or two pictures of like this old town houses, old town road. Um, <laughs> it's a, this, this small town with a huge reputation um, just because of like this, this medieval flair style. And yes, it's pretty. And if you are in that area, go there. If you are not in the area of Rothenburg, there are 3,475 other cities that look similar. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rothenburg, <laughs> crushing your marketing um, where you can take similar pictures. If you want to take that one picture that everybody on Instagram has taken a thousand times, go to Rothenburg. If you would just want to see that architecture, like I said, there are 3,274 other cities in Germany that look just the same. Again, if you're in the area, yes, it's pretty. Planning a whole like two days just to drive there, uh, no. Sorry, Rothenburg. <laughs> and Rothenburg is really not far from where I am, so I'm sorry, Rothenburg. 
Um, Brandenburg Gate, next on the list. Yes, 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 yes. The most historical um, site I think we have. Every time, at least from, and now I'm German, from my point of view, I feel, again, super melancholy, super, it's a super intense feeling. Every time I go and see the Brandenburg Gate, I feel like oh, that's where history went down. Um, it's it's a crazy feeling, in my opinion. You could feel the history that, that unfolded there. And uh, the area around is also nice um the museum's island the museum's island isn't far away which is also nice well far away depends i mean it's not it's not close but it's not that far nothing in berlin is that far apart <coughs> that's what i'm saying after living in bangkok um so <laughs> when i was living in germany it would have been far but now it's not um nevertheless there's a, there's a big park right next to the brandenburg gate <coughs> pardon me getting excited so there's a big park close to the Brandenburg Gate. There's also the monument that remembers the the Jewish people that lost their lives during the World War, which is also really somber. Um, also worth looking at. It's just a short walk from the Brandenburg Gate. There's the there's the the, the government complex area where all the government buildings are. They look quite nice, and it's. Um, next to the river and you can take a, a, a boat on the river of course as well and just walk next to the river to reach the museums for example so definitely worth uh, worth a visit um, i'm tooting berlin's horn here but it's really nice so yes go if you can if you have time to go to berlin um, check it out of course uh, then number four on the list is heidelberg castle and the heidelberg old town and yes it's pretty the thing is We've got so many, so many castles in Germany. Um, you should definitely go see one or two of those. Should you go to Heidelberg just to see the Heidelberg Castle? I know I'm repeating myself. I don't think so. Unless you are a really fan of castles. You can take those pictures in front of like an old castle like everywhere. And they, on a picture that they look all the same. Unless you're flying a drone or something. If you're taking drone pictures, then Heidelberg Castle really looks nice. Otherwise, if you just want castle pictures, you can do it in my hometown in Würzburg too, for example. There's a castle on the hill <laughs> and there's also like another palace, for example. So go to Würzburg. <laughs> Sorry, Heidelberg. Um, it's a, it is really pretty. The old town is also really pretty. Um, if you are around, if you're passing through, stop there. Yes. Spending an extra two days just to go there again. I wouldn't do it unless you are a castle aficionado. Now the most controversial, probably, or my most controversial take. Cologne and the Cologne Cathedral. <laughs> you can guess what's coming now, right? If you are a cathedral aficionado, sure, go there. If you've seen other cathedrals, big cathedrals before, it's all the same. And the one in Cologne isn't necessarily pretty, and it's not that easy to take nice pictures there. Um, it looks kind of cool when you go there by when you go to Cologne by train, and you you come you come you you arrive over the the bridge over the Rhine. I think it must be the Rhine, right? Over the river. That looks cool. Once you stand in front of it, it's kind of lame. It's not lame. It's just you know. I think the cathedral in Vienna looks nicer, even though it's a bit it's a bit smaller. For example, the cath other cathedrals look just nicer, especially if you want to take pictures there. Is it impressive? Yes. Should you go there if you've seen any other cathedral before and just to go there? No. Okay, should you go there if you are around? Yes. But why why would someone be around Cologne? So I mean <laughs> that's because I'm from Bavaria and we're just hating on them. But on a sincere note, um not the biggest fan of churches in general, and if you've seen other cathedrals, I think this one will not take your breath away. Um, okay, continuing with the controversial things. Number one or number two on the list. <coughs> Neuschwanstein Castle, the Disney Castle. Is it worth going? <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Don't worry. No, I'm, I'm just playing. Yes, it is. It will be insanely crowded. That one spot where everybody takes a picture where you see like and you're on a bridge between like those two mountain things, mountains, and then the castles in, in the background behind you. 
is super small and there will be a thousand people squeezing in and basically trying to push you off so i thought i'm gonna i'm just gonna jump down that 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 bridge and just gonna die just just so that it's over because i i hated it so much it was so crowded but should you have seen it once yes you should because it's really pretty and the area around is also really pretty so you can't can take it away from it if you are into castles that's where you want to go now having that said going inside and so on is a pain in the ass meaning uh, i think everything cost anyways I, th I, I didn't go inside i just walked around there um and it's always crowded and it's always like booked out so you have to wait forever so i didn't go inside if you want to go inside a castle go inside any other castle um it just looks nice from the outside you can walk around through the forest and so on that's kind of nice also then the, the areas around there cities around there look really pretty so it's 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 a nice day trip i would say um but don't expect to be just blown away by i know fireworks because there are no fireworks and every time i went there and i sent someone there there's always renovations happening so it's very unlikely that you will get the perfect shot like in those postcards on on, on the internet um, because right now or at least the last time i was there before the pandemic it was all just renovation so don't don't be disappointed okay number one on the dw.com um, list is the europe Euro, europa park euro park uh, it's a theme park that's obviously bullshit um sorry for saying it like this but that, that has nothing to do on like a on like a side thing list it's clearly paid for uh so uh, how dare you dw.com selling selling yourself out there are a few other um tourist attractions that popped up and i was looking for it though uh, looking through it though so i'm just gonna quickly also mention those i found one on turopia they say um the Völkerschlachten Den Denkmal in Leipzig, for example. So Leipzig is actually a very pretty city. Um, and, and there's always this, this joking around, like Eastern Germany, isn't it pretty and so on. It has very pretty spots. And um, Völkerschlachten Denkmal is just pretty impressive, uh, pretty somber too. And um, it's it, uh, translated, it's the, it's the monument of the Battle of Nations. And it's quite somber, but it's, yeah... I, it has this very historical touch so it's nice and leipzig is also a big city and also rather pretty so if you want to go to eastern germany um check out leipzig or dresden because they're really nice cities too um what, what i found surprisingly often is uh, the old town hall in bamberg um Bam bamberg if you like uh, american bam b-a-m-b-e-r-g that's now very close to my hometown so i'm gonna hate on it because <laughs> i think my hometown is much nicer way prettier um i don't see what's special there i mean i see what's special there because it's like basically on the river between two bridges um it's a, it's a nice picture but yeah that's about it so bamberg uh, please I'd rather go to würzburg <laughs> um i also saw the Harz mountains they are nice if you like forests if you're in the area of the Harz, it's like uh it's like a, a mountain range which is it's the highest mountain range actually in germany um I think it's also where the Grimm brothers wrote a story about, didn't they? I think so, right? Yes. You know the brothers Grimm, right? Yeah. Um, it's not that famous for tourists, but it is nice and it's green and it has castles, so it's really pretty. Um, but if you haven't, I, I repeat myself a lot today, but if you haven't planned on going there, I wouldn't go there. But if you have some time and you're like, hey, it's on the way, yeah, then stop because it's really pretty. It's nice to just hike around. Very peaceful. So I really, I really like this. Also in the winter, it's really like, like lots of snow and so on. It's really pretty. Um, we have also the Aachen Cathedral, which is even further down in, in, in the west. Um, prettier than, than the Cologne Cathedral. Smaller, I think, but prettier. But I also wouldn't necessarily go there we also have islands in germany island of sylt is s-y-l-t sylt is the northernmost uh, the northernmost coast in germany um it's called north frisian island uh, and it's nice if you're german and you want to go to the beach but it's usually always cold unless it's a really hot summer and i mean you're not going to germany for for the beaches right so it's a german beach so if you think german beach if you think about like a typical german person 
and then beach that's what you get it's, it's pretty it's nice i enjoy being there but i don't think you're going to germany for the beaches so i don't think it's worth just going there for that um another another place worth mentioning is as the saxon switzerland national park which is really nice which is not far from dresden like i told you eastern, eastern germany has some nice sites too it's really nice that they have like those sandstone mountains they, they look they, I, I like the look of that it's, it looks kind of kind of cool um and they have like the, the national park around so you can go hiking rock climbing and so on it it borders to the czech republic it, it even crosses over uh, so that's it's pre again i wouldn't go there if i just want to do like a germany trip and just see all the sites of germany that's probably not the one that you want to show off to your friends but it is really cool to be there and if you're into activities then like rock climbing and stuff it's really nice there so then i would go there um what else do we have we have the rugen cliffs like they are also like up there and in, in, on the islands um it's nice but again i don't think you go to it really looks pretty like google rugen cliffs r-u-g-e-n-c-l-i-f-f-s rugen cliffs it's pretty it looks nice um quite impressive like it's like high above the baltic sea um but i don't think that's the reason why you're going to germany unfortunately um yes uh what else do we have berlin well we have like all the government buildings they're really nice like in front of the german reichstag and the parliament uh, there's like a big space where you could also do picnic and stuff but lots of protests these days and there's also lots of police usually if you want to go inside it's like the, there's the famous glass ceiling if you want to go inside you can um but you have to book an appointment there uh, like a few days in advance um what else do we have well if you're there in christmas time i had i already did a christmas podcast so listen to this of course the christmas markets are nice during the christmas time if you if you want to see forests go to the black forest the black forest where the cake comes from the black forest cake um it's it's really pretty if you're in the area if you're in the southwestern area um go there it's pretty it's nice they have a funny german accent <laughs> says the guy from bavaria um yeah so it's it's i like the black forest um i wouldn't plan it again a trip just to see the black forest but if but if you're in the south southwestern area of germany check it out yeah you can like just enjoy the nature it's really really nice it's really clean it's uh, it's awesome um anything rhine related i'm not a big fan i know there are lots of like boat trips along the rhine and stuff like this but i don't think the rhine is it's nice but it's not that it's not that pretty but it's 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 nice so if you're older and you want to chill on a boat do a rhine cruise or something um if you want to see one significant church and it's not doesn't need to be like a cathedral and then you go to dresden and you go to the church of our lady it's called frauenkirche in, in german um because it's it's quite it, it has something you see then you're like oh that that really signified something so um uh it's 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 quite important also for us because for us germans because um it was reconstructed um i think it reopened in 2004 five or so if i'm not mistaken um because it was destroyed during the world war of course and so this was really something like really important um f like significant for us okay what else we have if you're there in september you go to the oktoberfest yes it's in september um then i would say one more thing that you might want to want to look into but now i'm besides my hometown of Würzburg, which is really pretty and again we have castles on the hill we have uh, a palace there which is also unesco world heritage so why does no one put Würzburg on the list P please i'm very very disappointed here um but also giving props of course to the north of germany northern germany um hamburg is pretty so hamburg is expensive grumpy people but pretty buildings <laughs> so if you're into like rain and pretty buildings then you go to hamburg hamburg is nice um also famous for the red light district in germany of course um, if you're into that but yeah so hamburg is pretty nice so i i i, I would say it's worth a day trip don't don't go by leave the car somewhere outside if you have a car leave it somewhere on, on a park and ride or something because the roads are f frustrating in, in hamburg um like all those crazy one-way streets and then all of you always hit the wrong exit so yeah but um it's, it's nice to be like at the river and so on it's pretty nice there 
Okay, we already talked about Berlin. Uh, I didn't give a shout to Munich yet. Munich, of course. Yeah, if you're in this, if you're in southern Germany, if you're in Bavaria, which is obviously the, the coolest um, province to be, and you're, you're in Würzburg and you just take a short drive, short drive, three, four hours, I guess, down to Munich. Munich is... V I like to hate on Munich because I don't like the, the Bayern Munich football team, but um, Munich is pretty. Gotta get, give it to them. Munich is pretty. Um, lots of nice lakes also in the in the extended area of Munich. Um, I would if if I would plan a trip right now for a few days, I would say start in Würzburg, obviously, go down to Munich, stay there for a day or two, then take a train from Munich to Salzburg to Austria, and from Munich to Salzburg you will see the Alps. And you're like, oh God, that's so pretty. And then from Salzburg you can go to the Alps. You could also go to the Alps from Munich, of course. Um, and from f further down south in Germany, but if you go to Salzburg um, by train, you will see the Alps, and you're like, oh! So you see them first, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna go there tomorrow. It's gonna be so awesome. So that's what that's what I would be doing, I think. Yeah. So, but Munich is really pretty. You have to have the the old town Munich with the Marienplatz, um, where there's there's there's, there's an old the old town hall, which is still the town hall. Then there's a, a really nice park, very close. Um, then there's a really nice market very close and if you're into sports there's of course also Allianz Arena which is a bit further away from downtown Munich um, if you want to see like where Bayern Munich plays for example which is also kind of impressive and they have the Olympic Stadium from back then from the Olymp Olympic Games where you can just walk around and chill and they're still like you can even do sports there they have the swimming area there uh, the, the gyms there beach volleyball courts it, it's awesome so Munich is really really pretty so I can't take anything away from that even though we'd like to like to bust some balls and one thing that I want to take something away from is Sansu Sea Park and Palace in Potsdam which is close-ish to Berlin Potsdam and Sansu Sea is somewhat famous but every time I went there, the weather was terrible and I hated it. And I never gotten any nice picture from Song So See. So um, if you're in the area and you have a day to waste, go to go to Potsdam. Potsdam is really boring. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Potsdam. Now that they have they have Elon Musk's Tesla factory there, but um, still, uh, Song So See sounds cooler than it is, in my opinion. It sounds cooler than it is. It's not. It's nice, but if you've seen other palaces and castles, it's not gonna wow you. I'm sorry to say that. It's rather big, so you, like wide. You can walk a lot, but you can walk a lot every, everywhere else too. I think so. Um, please don't hate me, Potsdam. But yeah, that was that was that. All right, so that that's my quick take of German sites. I hope that helped a little bit um, in order to how to go get around Germany, right? So either of course you have a car, which is the easiest thing in every country, I believe. Or, um, well, train, uh, if you have the money to spend, train is great in Germany, it's just very expensive. There are lots of people hating on the trains, um, like they're always late, but compared to other countries, the German trains are still amazing. So living abroad, having taken trains in Southeast Asia, for example, I would never dare to complain ever again about German trains. They're just quite expensive, unfortunately. There's also lots of long distance buses, like lots of them, one of them being Flixbus, F-L-I-X-B-U-S, Flixbus. That's the one that I took a lot back before the pandemic. There are many others too, though. If you just Google for a long distance bus Germany, you will see lots of them. You can even take overnight buses and so on. Um, so that's rather easy now also in Germany. All right. Okay, that's it. If you have any questions in regards to how to travel to Germany, what to do in Germany, where to go, what not, um, please do reach out. No problem via email. Email is funkitpod at gmail.com. Do it on social media. Social media is at Funkit Pod, F U N K I T P O D, Funkit Pod, and it's the main channel for this podcast. So just reach out, um, sh shoot me any question that you might have about Germany. Um, as always, thanks for listening, appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, rate this podcast if possible. If you rate it, then more people can find it, then we can have bigger, more discussions, which obviously also benefits everybody, hopefully. So thanks for this. Have a great week and I promise next week we will be back with something more intense again. Until then, take care, stay safe, servus.